Now, how would I classify this stuff? The label says 95% ethanol and 5% methanol. Notice it's a clear, colorless liquid. But I got two stuffs, the two things in it, so it's got to be a mixture. This is called a homogeneous mixture. And uh, we tend to call homogeneous mixtures like this solutions. Now, one of the things that is different about this clear, colorless liquid than water is a chemical property called um, its ability to, to combust. So it's combustibility. It's flammability. So if you notice, that thing is burning now. Water certainly doesn't do that. So that is a chemical property. I can tell because I have heat being given off. Now, if I take this clear colorless liquid, water, we call that a compound because all it is is H2O. So it's a pure substance. If I mix it with a little bit of this um, uh, ethanol, which is also clear and colorless, you'll be able to see that the ethanol will dissolve in the water. We say it is soluble. Well, now you can see that I'm mixing materials here. So that is still a homogeneous mixture called a solution. Now I'm adding a little bit of red food coloring to it. It too is soluble in this. Now I have a clear red mixture. Now I'm going to chemically, I mean, I'm going to physically separate these in a distillation apparatus. I've got a flask with a, a, a right arm flask or a side arm flask to it, and there's a thermometer stuck in there. That's called a condenser, and it um, has water flowing through it, coming up the bottom, coming toward the top, and then the water comes out, and you can see it coming out at the end of this hose right here. And that water is a coolant, and all it'll do is it will condense or convert the vapors back into a liquid. Now you can see I'm heating this, and as I move up to uh, read uh, where the thermometer is, I can see that it's only at 35 degrees Celsius. And right now, I don't have any liquid coming off, so I have very little in the vapor phase. Now, see, that thermometer is going to be measuring right where the vapor comes out. And you can see there's no liquid coming out right now. It's going to be measuring the temperature of the vapor. Now, if I wait a little while, now I can start seeing that I do see some liquid coming out. It's a clear, colorless liquid, so it cannot possibly be food coloring because it has a different physical property, color. When I measure the temperature of this vapor, okay, oops, I overshot the thermometer. There it is. I can see it's at 77 degrees Celsius. Well, that liquid is probably not water because water boils at 100, not at 77 under normal conditions. I can test to confirm that it's not water simply by lighting it. And you can see the dang thing is burning, so that liquid is not um, water. Distillation did not change the composition at all. All it did was separate it. Now, a separatory funnel um, is, it separates things by physical processes as well. Here's a substance called carbon tetrachloride. And you'll see that it is a clear, colorless liquid again. But carbon tetrachloride is a compound like water. It's not a mixture. So it does not have variable composition. It always has one carbon and four chlorines. Now, if I add water to it, what we are going to do is we will get a mixture. The question is, is it going to be homogeneous or is it going to be heterogeneous? And do you see the little boundary there? I can see two phases. So this is looking like it's going to be a heterogeneous mixture. I'm going to slosh it around here and see if I can't get it to dissolve. But no, it's separating back out into two layers, just like oil and water. The question is, what's on top and what's on the bottom? Well, do you remember the iodine that I uh, formed through electrolysis? Iodine in water is a solution. And if I were to go and add it to it, the, the water ought to mix with the water, and I should be able to tell where the water layer is. And since the water layer, it looks like it's on top because it's got the same color as what I just added to it. Now when I go and shake it up, um, what you're going to see as it starts to separate is a pink color forming. Now, evidence that a chemical reaction occurs is a, could possibly be a color change, but in this particular case, it isn't. Iodine dissolves in water to be sort of uh, yellow when it's dilute, but it dissolves in carbon tetrachloride to be pink. And the pink layer's on the bottom. Now, a separatory funnel, I can remove the pink layer 
by simply opening up the bottom. Decanting removes the top layer. A separatory funnel removes the bottom layer. Both take advantages of differences in densities of the two layers. So now I have iodine dissolved in carbon tetrachloride and it's pink and there's still a little bit of iodine dissolved in water and that's yellow. Now, do you remember that if I could concentrate iodine in water, it actually looks like a different color, red. There it is, dilute, it looks a little bit yellow. And here's my leftover carbon tetrachloride and water and you can see the carbon tetrachloride is on the bottom and the iodine is pink there and it's yellow in the, um, in the water.